Good afternoon and welcome to Audiobooks for a Well-Balanced Library, Advantages for Learning, Reading, and Relaxing, brought to you by EBSCO eBooks and Novelist. Uh, my name is Todd Conley, eBooks Marketing Manager, and today we'll be joined by Renee Young, Meta Metadata Librarian Supervisor from Novelist, Emma Wacker, from product, uh, product Manager from EBSCO eBooks, and Stephanie Buck is a Collections Management Specialist from EBSCO eBooks. Uh, they'll be taking us through the latest audiobook trends and findings from a recent uh, survey conducted with Library Journal, as well as an overview of the new and improved EBSCO audiobooks product. Uh, before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping items that I uh, want to address. Uh, during the presentation, uh, the phones will be muted, uh, but we encourage you to use the, the Q&A box uh, located in the lower right-hand corner uh, to type in any and submit any questions to us. The presentation will be approximately 25 minutes in length, uh, leaving us about five minutes at the end of the program to answer your questions. Um, again, we want you to use the Q&A box to uh, submit any questions to us. If we run out of time, we'll be sure to get back to you and answer your questions um, after the presentation. So once again, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, now, I'll now hand it over to Renee to start us off with the presentation. Thanks, Todd. Hello, everyone. This is Renee, and as Todd said, I'm a metadata librarian and the audiobook project lead at Novelist. If you're not familiar with Novelist, we're a company dedicated to providing readers and listeners advisory support through our suite of products, ranging from standalone databases like Novelist Plus and K8 Plus, to embedding our content directly into your library catalog with our product Novelist Select. In a few minutes, I'll give you more details on how we specifically support listeners advisory but first, I'm going to talk about audiobook trends in libraries. Next slide, thanks, Todd. Earlier this year, Novelist and Library Journal partnered together to create a survey of audiobook collections in both public and school libraries. We had a tremendous response rate and received a lot of valuable data about the state of library audiobook collections. Next slide. Our first question was about formats. We asked libraries to tell us the breakdown of their audiobook collection by format, as well as to estimate what the breakdown would be in three years in 2019. Looking at the chart, the first two rows show the public library responses, and the bottom two rows are for school libraries. The turquoise color on the left represents audiobooks on CD. As you're probably aware, these have been the mainstay of collections for years and still make up the largest part of both types of collections. But as you see, downloadable audiobooks in the dark blue color are gaining ground on CDs, and within three years, public libraries estimate that the amount of downloadable titles will almost overtake the number of titles on CD. School libraries aren't projecting quite as high a number for downloadable titles, but they still expect them to increase significantly over the next three years. Of the other formats, playaways in gray are projected to remain steady in public libraries, but to decrease slightly from 19 to 16% in school libraries. Streaming audiobooks, the green color on the chart, are expected to almost double their market share for both libraries within three years. And the yellow color represents any other audiobook format, such as audiobooks on cassette, MP3 audiobooks, and these are expected to either remain the same or decrease in both libraries. Next, I'm going to review the survey results comparing audiobook circulation trends of physical and digital audiobooks. Again, the top two rows show the public library data, and the bottom two show the school library responses. On this chart, the turquoise color represents increases in circulation, while navy blue represents decreasing circulation, and the gray indicates areas that stayed the same. You can see by the large amount of turquoise in the top row that most public libraries are seeing an increase in circulation of their digital collection, and 54% of school libraries also reported an increase, compared to 35 and 31% of physical collections showing circulation increases. This is a pretty large difference between collections and shows that the digital and physical divide is growing wider. In fact, 28% of public libraries and 19% of school libraries said their physical collections circulated less this year than last. Next slide, please. Another area of interest was identifying ways in which audiobooks support library customers or special populations of customers within libraries. 
It's probably not a surprise that commuters ranked at the top of the list for public libraries and reluctant readers for school libraries. Visually impaired customers are supported by 64% of public libraries and 71% of school library media specialists use their collection to support the, the school's curriculum, while reluctant and emerging readers and English language learners are supported by both types of libraries. All right, what you see now is a slide about our digital content. And as you can imagine, this is a big area of interest for us. And we, we wanted to get lots of feedback on digital audiobooks and the delivery platforms that libraries use. There is a lot of overlap between public and school library requirements. And almost the only difference reported is that public libraries want streaming capability, but school libraries prefer to download titles. For both types of respondents, but in differing degrees, the top answers were ease of use, a broad title selection, multiple checkouts per title, a good browsing experience, and compatibility with multiple devices. So to put it simply, if you have a platform that is intuitive and easy for customers to use, as well as a wide range of titles, you'll likely end up with satisfied library customers. Which brings us to listeners advisory. Even with the most customer-friendly digital platform, library customers are still going to have questions about audiobooks, and librarians are going to be called on more and more frequently to provide guidance on what to listen to next. We had each respondent tell us how frequently they are asked to provide listeners' advisory services. On this chart, the turquoise color corresponds to the public library answers, and the navy blue represents school library data. If you look at the top row, you'll see that 15% of public libraries and 7% of school libraries have daily listeners advisory interactions. Moving down to the weekly row, the percentage for public libraries jumps to 40% and up to 22% for school libraries. Moving down again to the monthly row, the responses are about equal with 21% of public libraries and 20% of school libraries providing listeners advisory at least once a month. And you can see in the bottom two rows that 24% of public libraries and 50% of school libraries are asked about audiobooks less than monthly or even never. Next slide, please. Continuing on the topic of listeners' advisory, our survey results contain pages of responses to the question about listeners' advisory challenges. This is a formidable issue for most librarians because it combines all the requirements of reader's advisory, such as knowledge of authors, genres, and appeal factors, with new aspects, such as how to identify production decisions and describe narrative performances. Among the pages of responses, these were the top issues. Knowledge of narrators, which is a challenging topic for multiple reasons, and the answer that kept coming up over and over again, especially from librarians who are not audiobook listeners themselves. The next top answer is not unique to listeners' advisory, since librarians' familiarity with authors and genres is also important to readers' advisory. And although some librarians may be genre specialists or have a lot of author knowledge, they may, may still find recommending titles outside of their own knowledge base to be intimidating. Collection size, format issues, and title availability are also seen as sizable hurdles for listeners' advisory. Lastly, there are quite a few people who are non-listeners, or as I call them, the unconverted, and these people simply prefer to read their stories in print instead of listening to them. And for them, as well as for anyone else who's not a certified audiophile, Novelist Plus is here to help. Next slide, please. We have information on over 60,000 audiobooks, including professional reviews from sources such as Audiophile Magazine, book list, library journal, and publishers weekly. We have sound samples and audio file sound reviews, both of which let you hear part of the audiobook so you or your customer can get a preview of the narrator's style. We have theme lists of recommended audiobooks, complete title lists of the major audiobook awards like the Audis, the Listen List, and the Odyssey Awards. We even developed a vocabulary of narrative appeal terms which help describe the narrator's performance, such as understated, brisk, or comedic, and production decisions like using multiple narrators, the inclusion of music or sound effects, and whether a title is dramatized. Our narrative appeal vocabulary is combined with our other extensive appeal headings and our thousands of subject headings and genres to provide targeted listening recommendations for each audiobook in our database, which makes Novelist Plus 
a one-stop listener's advisory resource. If anyone is interested in more information either about the Novelist suite of products or about the survey, please check out our website or email me at ryoung at ebsco.com. I'm now going to turn it over to Emma, who will talk more about the exciting new EBSCO audiobooks product. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, everyone else, as well, for joining. As Renee said, my name is Emma Wacker, and I'm the product manager for EBSCO eBooks and audiobooks. I'm really excited to be with you today to tell you about our latest user experience enhancements for EBSCO audiobooks. As Renee mentioned, users are listening to audiobooks for so many reasons. To gain back time they spend in the car or doing chores, uh, to strengthen their listening or comprehension skills in either their native language or a second or third language, uh, to provide an alternative to visual reading for students that may struggle or prefer to listen, and to those that have visual impairments, and many more. I really want to support uh, the transition to digital audiobooks. As Renee mentioned, that's a growing trend, which we're really exciting to see, excited to see. So um, it's really part of our key mission to provide your users with easy access to high-quality audiobook content in a way that's compatible with their active lifestyles and helps them meet their goals, whether they be educational or professional or just in their life. So we've partnered with Findaway, a global leader in digital content delivery, to upgrade the EBSCO audiobooks product in two key areas, a dramatically improved user experience with mobile support, and higher quality and broader content available for purchase. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned, our new audiobooks product offers a broader, better catalog of audiobooks that appeal to users of all ages and interests. My colleague Steph will talk more about the content in our collections in just a few minutes. Our new product also provides end users with a simple accessing experience that's compatible with their mobile devices. With those needs in mind, our new workflow allows end users to discover your audiobooks as they do today on the familiar EBSCO host or EDS platform and on both the desktop and mobile versions of those websites. Users can browse within categories which are displayed on the audiobooks landing page as well as view carousels of new titles and featured categories, which highlight particular books in your collection, making it easy to find something interesting to read, to listen to. Once the user has found a title of interest, they can read a description of the book, listen to a sample, uh, because we know that the quality of the narration and production of the book, as Renee mentioned, are so critical for an enjoyable listening experience. Next slide, please. So users will uh, browse for a title and they receive a search result list, which uh, for customers that already have EBSCOhost and EDS, this will look very familiar. And the user can click the new checkout button uh, under each record to trigger the new workflow. Once they click that, uh, next slide please. The user will be prompted to sign into their My EBSCOhost account and then they'll be prompted to select their checkout period. And uh, once they've actually checked out the book, we'll guide them to using our new audiobooks app. And I just want to mention uh, the checkout period. So this is something that the library can control in the EBSCO admin management module for audiobooks. And we recommend reviewing that to make sure that um, you're allowing enough time for your users to listen to the audiobook, but also keeping it short enough that the title won't be out of your collection for too long. And another setting I'd just like to mention in EBSCO Admin is the maximum checkouts per user for audiobooks. If you anticipate a lot of interest in your audiobooks, we would recommend maybe increasing the number of simultaneous checkouts per user so that they can uh, always have something of interest to listen to from your collection. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, once the user has selected their checkout period, We'll uh, show them the, uh, a successful modal, and we will prompt them to download the EBSCO Audiobooks app from either the App Store for their Apple device or Google Play for an Android device. Next slide. I just wanted to, to touch on as well, um, it's so important for our product to offer a complete mobile experience. For audiobooks, um, we added this whole new checkout workflow to the EBSCOhost and EDS mobile websites that wasn't available before. Uh, 
And so we've added that there and users can perform that same checkout workflow on a uh, phone or on a tablet using our mobile website. And they'll receive the same prompt to download the EBSCO Audiobooks app when they've completed their checkout. Uh, next slide, please. So here are a few screenshots of the new EBSCO Audiobooks app. Once the users downloaded the app to their device, they'll log in with the My EBSCO Host account they use to check out the book. So it's that same account that they used on the desktop or mobile site. That's their login information for the app. This is, as I said, this is also called the My EBSCO Host account. And um, the user can have this app installed on multiple devices, and they can download the titles um, anywhere they have the app installed. So if they have their phone in the car and their iPad at home, they can have the title downloaded on both devices so that they have a smooth listening experience. So once the user has logged in, they'll see their titles that they've checked out on the EBSCOhost site within the library page of the app. And one click uh, of the download button below the title starts downloading it to their device. And once it's downloaded, they'll see a play button appear. And one click of the play button starts playback for that user. Uh, next slide, please. The player screen shows the user's progress and provides access to common listening tools such as uh, going back 15 seconds to listen again, chapter forward and chapter back buttons, and a link to select a different chapter within the book. And we also have um, the option for users to down, uh, I'm sorry, delete downloaded titles from their device if they're running out of space or if they finished a book and they just want to uh, wipe it off their device, they can delete the file. And if their checkout is still valid, they can re-download it at any time. And uh, we've also added functionality so that users that may have access for audiobooks from multiple institutions can log out of the app and log in with a different set of credentials so they can access both libraries' collections within the app. And uh, we do prompt when the user is logging out uh, to confirm because when they do uh, log out, the downloaded file is deleted to save space on their device. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned, Steph will go into more detail about the great new content that we have available for purchase in EBSCOhost Collection Manager and the um, ways that we've packaged that for easy purchasing. But I wanted to just show you briefly how these audiobook titles appear in ECM so that you're comfortable to start buying right away. Our catalog now includes more than 60,000 titles for perpetual purchase from top publishers. This includes new releases and best-selling audiobook titles. The number of titles available for purchase does vary by market and territory, but there's something great for everyone, no matter where you are or what market you're in. And we've simplified purchasing options for audiobooks. In ECM, they're all available for single user purchase. And we encourage you to purchase as many copies as you think your users will need and to enable turn away alerts in EBSCO admin so you can be aware when to purchase additional copies of titles that are in particularly high demand. Uh, next slide, please, Tom. So here's a screenshot of audiobook titles in ECM. And you can limit your search to just returning audiobooks so that if you want to just go through and shop for audiobooks separately from ebooks, you can do that. And uh, each audiobook result displays a speaker icon to just sort of help differentiate which titles are ebooks and which titles are audiobooks if you don't make use of that limiter. Next slide. Thanks. Um, each audiobook title has a detailed record view in ECM, which includes access to the audiobook sample. This is the same one your user here, so you uh, are sure that the quality will be really good and that it will be an enjoyable listening experience. It includes a description of the book and other pertinent metadata that's required to help make a purchasing decision for your library. So I'll now hand things over to staff to tell you about our new audiobook content and the collections that our team has developed. Thanks, Emma and Renee, and everyone listening this afternoon. Um, again, my name is Stephanie Buck. I'm a collection management specialist. And I'm a librarian, uh, one of the librarians on the team of collection development uh, li uh, librarians here at EBSCO for eBooks and audiobooks. 
Um, before I get into the specifics of our new content, I first want to tell you that I love audiobooks. Um, I listen when I'm driving, when I'm working out or cleaning. Uh, the opportunities are endless. I listen for pleasure and professional development, uh, but there are also excellent learning and teaching tools. Audiobooks can teach critical listening, uh, introduce students to books above their reading level, introduce new vocabulary, pair with print and ebooks in a read aloud program, and aid prosody comprehension. And then there's the idea of how we experience books. I read Cloud Atlas a few years ago and I found it to be an incredible book. It broke my heart in the best way. And this past year I listened to a full cast audiobook version and it was a completely new experience. I loved it. I love it even more now because listening gave me a different and sometimes more nuanced understanding of the story. And who doesn't love to experience something in a new way? Uh, next slide, please. And now you can experience audiobooks with EBSCO's new and improved audiobook offerings. We now have tens of thousands of audiobooks from in-demand publishers for your listening pleasure, as Emma referenced earlier. You can choose from the newest, best-selling, and most popular titles. Fancy little history, biography, or the latest thriller? We've got you covered. Next slide. So we've got several audiobook collections available to help you get started, curate, started, curated by our team of collection development librarians, which I'm super proud to be a part of. The Audiobook Essentials Collections, small, medium, and large, offer the best audiobook titles from a range of leading publishers. Collections include both fiction and nonfiction titles, and genres range from fiction and literature, mystery and suspense, and biography to business, self-help, and more. We have three essential collection levels available to meet the needs of any library size. The collections are cumulative, so the larger sets include all titles from the smaller sets. The Audiobook Youth Essentials Collection offers fiction and nonfiction audiobook titles for children and young adults, covering a wide range of topics from sports to animals, mystery to fantasy, and history to ghost stories. The Audiobook Popular Fiction Collection offers best-selling, high-demand popular fiction titles for readers of all ages, covering a broad range of subjects to suit a variety of re reader interests. Included are titles from top authors like Stephen King, Nicholas Sparks, and Stuart Woods, as well as New York Times bestsellers and the latest blockbusters. The Audiobook Popular Nonfiction Collection offers popular best-selling nonfiction titles from top trade publishers for readers of all ages, covering subjects like business, current events, cooking, health and fitness, history, medicine, political science, sports and recreation, science, travel, and more. The Audiobook Award Winners Collection offers titles which have received audio-specific awards like Audio Awards, Earphone Awards, BBC Radio Awards, Washington Post Best Audiobook Awards, Audible Reviewer Choice Awards, and numerous other audio awards. Next slide. We're just getting started with audiobook collections. We'll have more ready for you soon, and these are just a few of the ideas we've put together. Books for your commute or road trip, popular narrators, classics, which, by the way, will be available in the beginning of October, and read-along titles for young readers. We'll also have the usual suspects for your favorites, mysteries and thrillers, science fiction and fantasy, romance and biography and memoir. Do you have any suggestions or collections you'd like to see? Please let us know. And that is a wrap up of our collections for you to date. Back to you, Todd. Thanks. Thank you so much, Steph and Emma and Renee. Uh, I'll now open it up to uh, for questions. Again, you can feel free to use the uh, Q&A box there. We have a few minutes remaining. Um, if we don't get to all your questions, so we'll be sure to get back to you uh, with answers after the webinar. So, uh, Emma, I, I think I have one here for you. Um, what are, quote, play away, unquote, and P3? Does downloading to one device then allow access on another device, or is it necessary to download um, each to each device? Thanks. I think um, the first part might have come from Renee's data in the survey. And Renee, please jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe PlayAway devices are preloaded physical devices that libraries can distribute to their users. And P3 was probably MP3. Is that correct, Renee? Yes, that's exactly right. PlayAways are they're pretty popular in both public and school libraries because it's like a small MP3 player that has a single title or a small collection of titles on it, and then the person checks that out and provides their own headphones, and then they can listen to that. So it's it's easy to um, to circulate, and then um, 
I apologize for not speaking more clearly, but I said I meant to say MP3 audiobooks. So that's it's an audiobook usually on a single MP3 formatted CD. So it, it condenses the entire audiobook, usually on one or two discs. Thanks, Renee. Great. And I Thanks will, for that. I will answer quickly just the second half of that question. As far as the EBSCO audiobooks experience, um, users can have the app on multiple devices, but uh, downloading it to one device does not trigger a download on another device. We're not at this time syncing the download across your devices. So that would be um, for each user to decide if they want the same title on multiple devices. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Emma. Uh, I think I got one here for Steph. Um, it, it is a, a two-pronged question here, but um, I was curious to know the number of youth uh, books that you might have in our collection out of the 60,000 plus that we have. Uh, so we add titles all the time, and as of today, I don't know the exact number, but I'm confident uh, that we have thousands of youth titles available. And the second part to that is that are the titles uh, only available in the collections that you specified or can a, uh, individual titles be downloaded? Individual titles can absolutely be purchased and downloaded. We've just put these collections together to help people have a place to start looking at the various audiobook titles that we do have. Great, thank you. Um, as, uh, okay, sorry, just running through some more here. Um, this one might be for Emma. Can I set my library's a checkout period for audiobooks separately from my ebook checkout period? Yes, definitely. There are settings within EBSCO Admin that control checkout periods maximum number of checkouts per user um, separately for audiobooks and for ebooks so your collections can be um, administered very in separately there so that you can have different experiences based on your users for each type of content. Great, thank you. Um, another question here for you, Emma, in terms of how EBSCO eBook offerings might integrate with other existing library catalogs out there, um, Follett, Destiny, um, do you know how they, they inter, can, they <laughs> can they communicate with each other, I guess, is, is what the question is? That's a good question. Um, we are exploring offering audiobooks um, for purchase through a lot of our partner channels. And I believe that there may be some integration with different platforms, um, but I'm not sure to right now which ones are sort of a plug and play, but I can look into that um, and get back to whoever had that question, Todd. Great, thank you. Um, can I enable holds for my audio books? I think yes, that's for Emma. we definitely recommend it, uh, especially if you think you're going to have a lot of excitement around your audiobooks collection. We would recommend enabling holds so that uh, people can get in line for the most popular books. Great. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes here for a few more questions. Um, is there a service fee for our school system subscribing to EBSCO? Nope. I don't know. No, no fee, right? <laughs> Correct. Librarians just will purchase whatever titles they like, and that is the cost of having EBSCO audiobooks. The platform of EBSCO host or EDS comes along as the delivery mechanism for your audiobook content. Great. Uh, just a couple more here. Um, can I generate usage statistics for my audiobooks? Yes, definitely. Uh, librarians can generate usage statistics for audiobooks by title or by the audiobooks collection um, and a few other parameters in EBSCO admin to determine um, how much use their audiobooks are getting, how much use particular titles are getting, and um, as I mentioned earlier, um, one thing we recommend is enabling turn away alerts so that um, you don't have to even run a usage report for a particular title. You can be alerted right away if someone wanted access and wasn't able to get to it. Um, so that allows you to make a decision right then whether you need to purchase another copy to increase the access level. 
Great, thank you. And the last question here for, uh, I think this one's for Renee. Um, so can I see my library holdings um, in Novelist Plus if I have Novelist Plus account? Yes, you can. Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending and thank you to Steph, Emma, and Renee for presenting. Um, uh, we hope that you found this information uh, inf informational and educational. Um, so after you close out of the webinar, uh, you'll be directed to a landing page where you can request a free trial of the EBSCO audiobooks product and find additional information on Novelist and a free trial of Novelist Plus. So thank you once again.